Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Mint Crusted Rack of Lamb. That's right, it's almost Easter and lamb is very traditional and so is serving it with mint. So here we're going to eliminate the need for that green jelly and we're going to put the mint flavoring right into the crust. We're also going to pair it with a little bit of a sweet vinaigrette. This is really delicious and super easy. So here we go. First thing we're going to pick about a cup of mint leaves. All right, like a cup packed. I didn't measure it because it's mint. We're going to bring some water to a boil. We're going to throw the mint leaves in the boiling water. So basically what we're doing here is locking in that green color. Mint can get a little funky if you chop it, crush it, puree it in its raw state. All right, it can turn very dark. And you're going to literally just give this a few seconds. All right. So basically I gave it one stir. This is all in real time, by the way. And then I scooped it out into ice water to stop the cooking process. All right, as soon as that mint is cold, which is, again, only going to take a couple seconds because that's ice water, you're going to squeeze it out, wring it out as best you can. All right, get all the water out of that. Throw it in a blender or a small food processor. I'm going to throw mine in a petite roboku. That was for my French chef friends, if I had any. All right, along with the blanched mint, we're going to add some garlic, some olive oil, not extra virgin, just regular olive oil, some breadcrumbs, some cayenne, some salt, and some black pepper. All right, so pretty straightforward. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the lid on this and you know what's coming next. We're gonna pulse on and off until it's all completely processed. And basically you have a fine, somewhat green crumb. It smells amazing by the way. So after about 20, 30 seconds of pulsing on and off, mine was done and looked like that. Looks pretty good. All right, so to finish this, we're gonna add a little bit of freshly grated Parmesan, Reggiano, of course. And you could put that with the breadcrumbs in the food processor or blender. I just think it gets a little gummy. So I like to mix it in at the end. All right, so set that aside, that's ready. Next up, we need a little bit of a mustard sauce to glue this crust to the lamb. I'm using an herb Dijon, that's why mine's green. It has some parsley and tarragon in there. If you can find a green herb or a tarragon mustard, use it, but regular Dijon will work, no problem. And to that, I'm gonna add a little spoon of honey, and that is it, very simple. So I'm gonna stir that in, I'm gonna set that aside, and that is ready. As advertised, we're using rack of lamb, and this is what they look like. All right, this one's been pretty much fully trimmed. They're all a fairly standard size, usually have eight bones. All right, they're usually Frenched, which is not as fun as it sounds. It just means the meat and fat is taken out between the bones. All right, and that silver skin, I don't worry about. If you want to spend time and trim it, go ahead. I really never had a problem not trimming it, never had a complaint, never had any silver skin stuck in my teeth. But I do do one little trick here. I take the knife and I make a little slice in between each bone, only about a half inch to an inch. I don't want it to touch the loin. I'm just going down to where the bone meets the loin and stopping right there. And I think that makes it cook a little more evenly. I think a little more of that fat renders out from around the bone. So that's prepped. We're gonna season that generously with salt and pepper. And then in a skillet over high heat with just a few drips of vegetable oil, I'm gonna brown the surfaces of that rack of lamb. This is technically an optional step, but I think it does add a little bit of flavor. Browned meat versus unbrowned meat is always gonna be a little more flavorful. So I do it. All right, so that's brown. We're gonna transfer that onto our baking sheet that's been lined with foil. We're gonna take our mustard and honey mixture and spread that over the surface. And yes, I'm gonna put a little bit on the ends. And then I'm gonna take my hand and kind of lay it against the front. And I'm gonna pour on the crumbs. By the way, the crumb measurements I give you are gonna be enough for two racks of lamb. And we're being very generous here. I'm really piling it on and pressing it in. And here's a little trick when I'm done, I'm gonna sort of lift this up and place it on top of those excess crumbs so they kind of bake onto that bottom to give it a little extra crust. If you have an extra second, you can take a paper towel and wipe any excess crumbs off, but that's not a big deal. You shouldn't have a problem. That's gonna go in a preheated 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes or until done, okay? But more about that later. While that's roasting, I'm gonna make a simple honey vinaigrette. I'm gonna put some honey in a jar, and I'm using a mason jar because it's really easy this way. No whisking, no drizzling. All right, just vigorous shaking. I'm gonna put in some rice vinegar. I'm gonna put in just a little tiny dollop of mustard. That's gonna help emulsify this. And then whatever level that has come up to, I'm gonna put an equal amount of extra virgin olive oil. We're gonna season that with salt and pepper. I'm gonna put on the lid. I'm gonna screw it tight, and I'm gonna shake that vigorously until it's emulsified. And that's gonna provide a beautiful little sweet balance to that tangy, minty crust. So that's done, we're gonna set that aside. By now your lamb should be getting close. So here we are after 20 minutes. I'm going for an internal temperature of about 125 to 130. 
I like my rack of lamb between medium rare and medium, so I went 125. Of course you're gonna let this rest. How long? 10 minutes. All right, so mine's rested. I'm gonna grab my sharp knife. I like to give a half a rack per person. So I cut that in half, I cut that half in half, and I'm gonna give two of those beautiful sections per order, all right? So for me, that's a perfect medium. Medium rare is fine, like I said. Rare, not so much. Rare lamb fat is not a pleasant experience, in my opinion. All right, once your lamb is sliced and placed on your plate, we're gonna drizzle over that gorgeous and slightly sweet honey vinaigrette. Look at that. Maybe a little fresh mint to garnish. And that's it, mint crusted rack of lamb with a honey vinaigrette. I really need to taste this. The meat was perfect, juicy, tender. All right, the crust very minty, but not too strong. A nice tang from the mustard, which balances perfectly with that slightly sweet vinaigrette. Just a wonderful lamb dish, and like I said, would make a very beautiful, special occasion Easter dinner. So I hope you give that a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.